So I get to introduce Junyun Zhang. She's an associate professor in the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics. She joined us in fall of 2020. And if my memory serves, my last dinner out in 2020, at the end of February, probably was the dinner we had when we were interviewing you. And so then Dean joined us, and, and we saw her in two dimensions for many, many months. And now she's here in three dimensions, which is awesome for all of us. Um, Dean works in research topics that address the design and manufacture of composite material structures, <coughs> and, some, and also some work in bio-inspired soft materials. She's an NSF Career Award recipient, and some of her work uh, in modeling progressive damage in composites won accolades from the Air Force Research Laboratories. She earned her PhD from the University of Michigan in 2014, so she went to the same school I went to, which is great. Did a postdoc there at the University of Washington and was an assistant professor at UConn, and we managed to pull her away from Connecticut and bring her to West Lafayette. So again, congratulations, Daniel, and we're looking forward to your chat, your talk. Thank you so much for the uh, for the introduction. I do remember I my my interview um, was on March twelfth. Uh, that's probably the last day everyone in a uh, normal operating mode, and that's close to the spring break. And after that, everything uh, shut down. I still remember when I flew back. It's so hard to do grocery shopping because I went to the uh, the grocery store and literally everything that we need to purchase sold out. So I do remember that experience. So thank you so much for reminding this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess I will, in this talk, I will start from where I come from and share my journey um, to become an associate professor here. So I was grew up and um, I, I was born and grew up in uh, Shanghai, China, which is a um, probably you know as the uh, famous for its uh, financial and uh, uh, trading mark, uh, sectors, and uh, also considered as the uh, financial center uh, of China. My high school is uh, located in the downtown area of Shanghai, uh, so it's kind of like I went to school, but it's kind of like one block away from Fifth Avenue in New York, so <laughs> it's a very fancy thing, uh, very fancy place. Um, so when I was in uh, the high school, I really enjoy math and the physics and start to develop my interest in aerospace engineering. I kind of in inspired by a magazine I found in my uh, high school library it talking about uh, aviation aerospace knowledge. And the thing I really like is uh, you can use very simple math and the physics that we learn from the class. And with that simple knowledge, you can start to learn how an airplane fly and all kinds of the fancy rocket science. I was very lucky to be accepted by uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, which is a very uh, nice university uh, focusing on um, engineering education. But in my early 20s, I also would like to see the entire world. Um, I joined this uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University Michigan joint program that gave me opportunity to spend two years in Shanghai Jiao Tong and another two years at the University of Michigan, and I will get dual degrees from both uh, universities. So in the summer of 2007, I took a flight from Shanghai to Detroit and uh, started to get my uh, learning experience at the University of Michigan. And this also opened up more opportunities that I can uh, also get a major in aerospace engineering. So when I was at the Shanghai Jiao Tong, there's no dedicated program uh, for aerospace engineering. So, it's really a wonderful experience for me as an undergraduate student to be exposed to uh, multiple, discipline, uh, multiple disciplines in aerospace engineering. Um, I think at the time I have more interest in um, fluid dynamics, aerodynamics, um, but also at the same time I'm very interested in um, control, navigation, uh, material structures, and uh, overall the design optimization. I guess it's a professor across the expertise. Um, and I did my uh, undergraduate around 2000, um, between 2005 and 2009. This is also a rapid development of uh, many commercial airplanes that the airplanes become more and more uh, efficient. So this is showing the energy intensity versus uh, vertical uh, models of airplanes. And you will see in that time frame, the airplanes become very efficient, even more efficient than the car that we are uh, driving. This coming towards, uh, like I say, I could be exposed to multiple disciplines um, in different concentration areas in aerospace. And 
uh, coming towards my undergraduate research experience in the summer of 2008 when I was a rising senior student. I spent the entire summer in my later my PhD advisor Anthony Wah's uh, lab. Um, the, the topic is actually very interesting. He challenged me to mimic the, uh, like an inside wing and using the time is very uh, popular, the nanomaterials. <laughs> So I went to the lab, fabric these wings, and also challenged myself to perform uh, some of the simulation work. When I even look back, I still feel it's a fairly challenging. At the time, I learned how to do finite element analysis, um, how to do experiments, how to operate high-speed camera, and how to do model analysis. So, um, so when I look back, it's still amazing. And um, it also gave me tremendous opportunity to work with graduate students, PhD students, uh, to know the entire environment in my advisor's lab um, and later get my uh, more and more interest in terms of uh, material and the structures. So this later to be my, uh, my research focus that on the lightweight composite materials. So in uh, aerospace, um, one of the portion for the structure design is to make a lightweight. That's the most critical uh, factor in aerospace structures. Um, so this is actually showing, uh, like over the years, how the these lightweight composite materials being used for different models of L plants, and especially saying like when I did my graduate stu uh, study uh, from 2009 to uh, 2014, it's also the time we see uh, Boeing 787 um, and uh, Airbus 350 that being used uh, lots of structure uh, by the composite. So uh, very brief about my research, like the, this lightweight material, we, the reason we call it a composite is a combination of multiple materials. The advantage of it is a truly material by design that you combine uh, the strength from the reinforcement, but also the toughness of the um, binding polymers. So you end up with a super lightweight, but also high performance material. So I continue my PhD in this area. At the time we talk about how we can do material design uh, with the computational model. So we did lots of experiments in the lab, uh, including these um, very interesting impact experiments, and also do a uh, pretty uh, interesting multi-scale uh, progressive damage model for the composite structures. Just to have a better way to understand how the material behave, eventually how the structure behave using this uh, new materials, this uh, advanced material. So I took my uh, academia journey start from uh, University of Connecticut in 2015. So unlike many uh, people get the opportunity to do a fairly long, um, uh, get some uh, post, like a uh, dedicated postdoc uh, experience, I kind of uh, took my ac uh, academia job right at my uh, graduation. And it's really hard, I would say, in this way. Like you have to uh, think about what you want to do, right? So the first challenge that I will face when I, uh, my previous work is more focused on the structure behavior is when I get into my new lab and I even don't have my specimen. So it coming towards a very nature, towards like we have to do some manufacturing work. And also realize like, whoops, sorry. When we're looking towards a composite, it's not just like we adding multiple materials together and we can create a, a structure component, but we also need to consider the manufacturing defects and the variability in the whole process. So I kind of naturally uh, switch my uh, research more focus on on the manufacturing process and how to have a high fidelity model to simulate this manufacturing process. Um, this whole test is um, summarized in one slide, but it's also a pretty challenge that I, like my first two, three years as a assistant professor, I feel like I'm more like a graduate student. I start to learn polymer physics from uh, well-known faculty, mem uh, like some well-known experts in our, uh, at the University of Connecticut, uh, talking uh, towards my colleagues about how to do uh, actually multi-physics uh, simulations as my background is more on the structure side, but I also need to learn how to do um, kind of the uh, computational fluid dynamics. And um, um, I'm very lucky that I got this position at Purdue in fall um, 2020. And Purdue is always well known for the composite uh, area that we get uh, so many well known uh, faculty members here and the experts in the department. It's also moving towards a very nice facility uh, 
at the composite manufacturing simulation center that we get all these automated machines that pushing towards the next my academic journey to pushing more uh, towards the automation, digital trends, uh, and the hybrid manufacturing and more sustainable uh, manufacturing decarbonization in our composite manufacturing um, process. I guess throughout this journey, the uh, the most interesting thing I uh, thing I was uh, like to hear is the very fun part of this job is to do the outreach. I always remember the time when I was a high school student. I want to learn aerospace. Now I start to get a position that I can uh, enroll high school kids in my lab to be exposed to uh, aerospace or uh, new material, lightweight material like composites, and also uh, go through the outreach like a museum projects that we interface with little kids. Um, explore like these new material systems that are being used now very widely in the aerospace. I guess I don't know what I should say about my advice on all my um, towards the, the entire journey become a social professor. But I guess the passion is very important. Like probably everyone like aerospace always have passion to build and fly an airplane and I think that passion is still uh, carrying me down uh, this uh, very long journey and be confident about self and always step out your comfort zone so be honest given this talk I feel lots of pressure I guess I will be more easy to have a technical presentation than sharing my experience but just like what our aerospace legend Amelia Earhart saying, um, the best, the most effective way to do it is just do it. So I give this presentation. I know it's not perfect, but I think I do it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, lastly, I, there are so many people I would like to thank. Um, so definitely my family. We moved to Purdue uh, to West Lafayette when my son was two months old. So it's a very <laughs> I mean, when I look back, I don't know if I would do it, but yes, I did it. <laughs> um, so uh, the great support from my parents and my parents-in-law, my husband, and uh, definitely to make everything happen is, um, is my great uh, graduate students, and, and some of them I sit here. Uh, especially my several uh, the first graduate students in my lab who really trust me that I can uh, lead the group and also uh, thanks to uh, Ryan Enos who actually helped the move from connected to uh, Purdue which won't happen I mean, it's so hard during the pandemic and also um, my first graduate official PhD student here uh, in Qingxuan, um got the student's best to paper award when I never got when I was a student so <laughs> And that has so many postdoc and graduate students and the graduate students working in my group. Um, my PhD advisor who really bring me to this um, area, uh, my mentor here at the Purdue, uh, Professor Baron Pipes, uh, Dr. Professor Wen Bin Yu and uh, Professor Karen Marias, um, really helped me to put together my package here because it's, it's still a bit transition. My great colleague at the University of Connecticut that uh, really helped me to start my career in academia. And also uh, my uh, sponsors who really trust me. Like I always own my gratitude to uh, you can Aerospace, the first company supported this work, who trust me the time I even didn't have a model, but they trust me I can do it. Um, and also great support from our department. Uh, our department had uh, Professor Bill Crossley, um, the, um, Professor uh, Tyler Tolman, who also got tenure this year, and also um, Professor uh, Hashim Hassan, helped me a lot with the new course development here at Purdue. And the great staff support, uh, without the help, I won't be able to put together this tenure package. And also my second home at Purdue at the Composite Manufacturing Simulation Center, uh, which really make, uh, I, I feel lots of comfortable when I was there, uh, especially during COVID, helped me to establish my lab uh, at Purdue. This is so hard, but thank you so much. So with that, I would like to take questions. I do think we have some time for a couple of questions. And again, congratulations, Thank Dean. You. I did have a question if we needed to start with one. So you know I've got a passion about aircraft as well. <laughs> and I went to Michigan as well. <laughs> the coach now is the quarterback when I was there, so that kind of puts the date a little bit differently. Um, 
but the idea around sustainability, right? So the lightweight composite materials is a huge key to reducing the energy that we need to fly the airplanes. And so that's kind of the first lever we need to pull. Yes. Then what happens going forward now when we're building these materials, composite materials? Have you started thinking about reuse and recycle? And what do yes. we do with the old airplanes? We can't yeah. turn them into beer cans, right? So what do we do? Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, I, I feel the opportunity. I feel uh, the I'm very lucky get opportunity to work here. So the the new machine that we are getting in will able to do fully automation, but also do some more plastic materials. So uh, this can be a, a good push because the some more plastic material once you heat back and can reform. Um, and also with the composite manufacturing, there's so many things. I mean, like a tooling, uh, other material to make the composite. Uh, eventually uh, will go to landfill. So with this uh, highly automated uh, system, we can reduce this waste a lot and also really push it towards a recycle of this material using some more plastic material technology. Next, we have questions from the audience. Maybe I'll, I'll make a very quick question, comments. Dian Yun, thank you for the beautiful presentation. <laughs> I think you had done an excellent job. Thank and reflecting you. this journey and you know with uh, with uh, the humble and uh, humor right and also the insights about you know the challenges so if if you can just uh, share a little bit about what you wish to know when you just uh, start this job right so in reflect uh, 3 6 years ago mm -hmm. and uh, what we can help from college of engineering mm -hmm. perspective uh, continue support your journey and to reach to the next level of the success? Sure, um, I think this is an excellent question as I kind of get started twice at two different universities. So I, I think uh, uh, the best support is uh, to have more workshop on how to write a winning proposal. I think that is really useful, uh, especially um, not everyone join, have this position and know how to write a proposal. I, I started to learn what is a proposal when I did my first interview. So uh, I even don't know what is a budget or what is overhead. So. Um, I think that that is important and also creating a uh, supporting system for assistant professor I think is also very important. I know I didn't enjoy in a right good time like because of COVID, uh, but I, I think I have a network of all the assistant professor I think is also uh, very important because we really can support um, each other and uh, we do collaborations on different research idea but support each other. Um, and I think with the uh, assistant professor, we really want to expand our network. So when I started Connecticut, it's kind of easy because the colleges have a smaller size. But here, Purdue is so big. I mean, even I still feel a little lost because uh, it's just too many experts. And uh, um, I, I think get the opportunity for a uh, new hire and assistant professor to have like a seminar or webinar uh, in different departments I think that would be also um, very beneficial for um, young assistant professors. 